Good evening, everybody. Hello, can everyone hear me? Can you type in the chat if you can hear me? Wonderful. Zoom is strange to me. <clears throat> Excuse me, I can't see you guys. Um, but I am so excited that you guys are joining tonight. I see the Q&A chat is up, not the not the regular chat. So that's great to know. Um, I'm going to give it about one or two more minutes before we begin. Um, again, I'm so excited to be here with you all and bear with me uh, with my scratchy voice this evening. Um, so we'll start in about one to two minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and begin this presentation. Um, my name is Lisa Harris. <clears throat> I know my video says Brianna. Um, oh, does someone have a question? Uh, my name is Lisa Harris. I am a global education advisor for CIEE. I uh, work with Texas South area. Um, I'm so excited to share information with you all this evening. Um, I am a bit under the weather. My throat's a bit scratchy. Um, I might need to stop and drink some water. Um, but please uh, put any um, <clears throat> questions in the Q&A chat, and I'd be happy to answer it um, as we go through. Um, just a quick um, beginning question. Can you put in the chat if you're a student, a teacher, um, a parent, <clears throat> just so I can um, know what my audience is this evening. Hi, Nicole. Lovely to have you. Okay, we have students, students with their parent. Wonderful. Well, I'm so glad you guys are interested in studying abroad. Um, CIEE has a mission of intercultural exchange and we do that through study abroad. Um, study abroad is such a wonderful experience for students to start seeing the world for themselves, gaining independence, um, getting ready for college all sorts of benefits. So I do believe it's important to share these opportunities 
um, with future students. So I applaud you all for being here and being interested in study abroad. Um, CIEE, uh, Global Education, Global, I'm sorry, I just got distracted. Hi, Pierre. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, yeah. I was just hopping off from uh, my previous session, sorry. Please That's continue. okay, welcome. You know You're doing? just about to start, yeah. Super, I'll be here to take um, type answers in the, the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. My name is Pierre, sorry, I'm not Brianna, my name is wrong. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can answer questions in the little Q&A module and I will answer them as we go, or also uh, at the end of the presentation, um, uh, we'll be able to, to take them uh, live as well. So please. Great, we're happy to have you, Pierre. Great. Um, so um, as I was saying, CIEE, the Council on International Educational Exchange, we've been around for about 75 years. Um, we started with a mission of human diplomacy a little bit after World War II, and now we've grown um, to this larger organization where we are able to host high schoolers over the summer and over a semester. And so, yeah, let's get into it. I want to share a little bit um, with some reflections from our CIE alumni. So here we have a quote from Mike um, saying, CIE changed my life. I am visiting my host family again in December. I love this quote because I think a lot of students might be a little hesitant um, on the host family portion of our trips, but a lot of students that I speak with and schools say, that was my favorite part of the experience. Um, our host families are so excited to share their culture with you and to host you. So um, yes, we love our host families. And here we have from Quinn. He is saying, it truly changed my life. <clears throat> it gave me opportunity to know what I wanted to do and what I wanted to pursue. Um, I'm assuming when he leaves college so or high school. Um, so yeah, just another wonderful quote from some of our alumni. And then of course, uh, all the wonderful friendships and connections you'll make on program is reflected here in Megan's quote. Um, you're gonna be with students from all across the United States. And so it's really a time to see other perspectives and gain a global insight um, to bring back to your own community. So <clears throat> we have over 30 plus um, study centers across the globe. Um, from Latin America to Mexico, Costa Rica, all the way to Europe, Africa, Asia Pacific area. Um, Pierre, are we doing any kind of, um, can I ask them to interact or are we just information tonight? Um, they can ask questions through the um, Q&A, but they, okay. they, they can't ask questions uh, verbally. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so does anybody here with us tonight know where they want to study or somewhere that they're interested in? Um, put it in the chat or the Q&A. Madrid, Spain, wonderful. I hope it's for the Spanish program because it's great. Korea, Paris, Ghana, Toulouse. Look wow, so. wonderful. Yeah, very cool. Oh, someone's already accepted to Lisbon. Congratulations. So yes, I'm so excited to see that. So as you can see in the chat there, there are so many different areas and places that people want to go um, study in. So that's wonderful. I'm glad you guys are all here. <clears throat> So just a quick brief overview of the programs that we offer in the high school or transitioning to college um, department area. We have summer abroad, which is what I'm sharing with you today. 
semester abroad, which is where you would be a local going to the local high school there in the country that you choose to study in. And then we also offer a gap year abroad for uh, students that aren't quite ready to begin their university studies. Um, they can go for a gap year and learn a language while they're abroad. And then our new um, first year abroad program is super exciting. Basically students going into their first year of college can apply to our partner college. They can do their first few introductory college courses abroad and then come back and transfer to another university or continue with our partner college. Um, it's really exciting because students can use um, any scholarship that you get through the school or any federal funding that you receive. So wonderful opportunity there. So for a summer abroad, okay, the programs are three to four weeks, depending on the program type you choose. They run in June and July. So session one is June, session two is July. We have 50 plus programs running this summer in 35 plus destinations. It's fully immersive in the language or the topic. And if you do a language program, you can earn four college credits during your wonderful summer abroad. <clears throat> the semester abroad, um, like I mentioned, you'll be placed in a local high school, excuse me, and a home stay. You can stay there for a trimester, semester, or a year. The program cost includes airfare, housing, tuition, and two group excursions per semester. Um, so you can discover your new home, your new community. Gap year um, <clears throat> program costs include your housing, tuition, your weekly activities, two group um, excursions. Um, it is for one semester or up to a year. Um, and you can grow, grow your language skills while you're there exploring abroad. And then of course, our first year abroad, um, like I mentioned, you can do your first uh, 12 to three call it 12 to 13 college credits while you're there abroad. Um, there are 12 week semester or two 12 six week blocks. And the tuition covers housing, on-site support, academic tutoring, and student safety. So let's get into summer. I know it's coming up soon here. We're about to go on to some holiday break. So a great time to get your applications in for the summer. Our two program types, um, I'm gonna start with our topic programs first. These programs are three weeks long. They cover um, topics like STEM, arts, business, social change. I've been going through the program topics with students while I've been in high schools, and they're so excited about some of the new ones that we have um, available this summer. So definitely look into those. <clears throat> excuse me definitely look into it there's always something that can add to your future studies um, or just go and explore do a service learning um, you can earn up to 50 hours of service learning while you're abroad and these are designed to help you explore passion or career um, for example the aquatic science, you might go out and help us local scientists with an initiative that they have going on. Um, and then by the end, you'll have a project portfolio and a certificate um, to show your studies. The language program. <clears throat> These are four weeks long. Um, we have seven world languages that we offer. Spanish and French are the only two that require one year of high school um, experience with the language, but German, Italian, Arabic, Japanese, and Mandarin, you can be a complete novice. Um, if you're just interested in Japanese or Arabic culture, you can join these programs and uh, be immersed in the community and really start your, your studies or 
your exploration of that culture. You do stay with a local homestay. Like I mentioned in the beginning, they are very excited to have you and share um, their culture with you. Um, and a lot of students I've met with say that they still keep in contact and are planning to visit their homestay. The growth um, during this month study of study abroad is incredible because you are immersed in the culture and the language 24 seven. You wake up, you speak with your host family at breakfast, you commute to the study center, you're reading the signs and the target language, you do instruction with your local instructor who is only going to be instructing you in that target language. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you're out doing your cultural activities, the program leaders are excited to have you stay in the target language and speak to them in the target language. And then you come home to your homestay and you wrap up the whole day speaking to them in that language. And so it's very different from going to high school in a U.S. high school classroom because for that hour, you may be speaking the new target language, but when you go to your next period and so on and so forth, uh, you switch to your native uh, language or English or however you communicate with your friends. While you're doing the language program, you can earn four college credits through Tulane University. And you can also earn the Global Seal of Biliteracy. This certificate um, validates um, your proficiency in that language. And so that's really good for college applications and when you start to join the workforce. Here's a <clears throat> quick overview of what your Monday through Friday will look like. So, if you're in the language classroom, like I mentioned, you'll wake up, have breakfast with your homestay, commute to the study center, do two to three hours of classwork with your instructor, go out in the afternoon, speak to locals, ask them, you know, what's your favorite market for, for, for getting fish or, you know, where's your favorite plaza to hang out with your friends? And then you go to maybe a museum. When I was visiting the Barcelona Study Center, we did flamenco dancing and we spoke to the instructor about herself and the art of flamenco in Spanish. And then you do have free time before you head back home to your host family to grab some gelato. Um, on the weekends, you'll have a one day trip on, on one weekend and then an overnight excursion. So those trips um, allow you to see a little bit more outside of the city that you're based in. Um, and so those are always a lot of fun. So this is similar to the topic program layout. Um, <laughs> but of course, instead of cultural activities, you're doing um, activities related to the topic that you are studying. And um, you will also still be doing cultural activities. You'll have about six hours of um, language studies during your topic program. Um, it's kind of like survival language to help you while you're navigating the country that you're in. Um, and so it's still a lot of fun, still awesome time to network and connect with like-minded people. Um, so yeah. Here's the um, kind of zoomed in view of the language class portion of the uh, <clears throat> study abroad programs we have. So the language class, for example, you may role play how to order at a restaurant and then you'll go into the community and practice. Um, you might go to a tapas bar and practice ordering in Spanish. Um, and then the cultural activity will connect to that week's theme. So it looks like this theme might be food, um, restaurant etiquette, things like that. Um, so then you would go and make your own tapas at a cultural activity. And then it all gets um, connected at the end with your host family. You prepare dinner with your host mom and talk about your day. So your learning is connected throughout the whole day. <clears throat> So why should you choose CIEE? We've been doing this for over 75 years. Um, 
we have lots of networks and structures in place to make sure your study abroad experience is welcoming and productive and you have a great time. We support over 30,000 students every year. So we've learned a lot and we made our program structured so you feel safe and um, have a good time. We are a nonprofit organization, excuse me. <laughs> We're a nonprofit organization. We're driven by our mission of interculture exchange, accessibility, language development. And we administer the largest scholarship fund for high school students to study over the summer. Our safety, health and security department are always on hand helping us with students um, traveling with peace of mind. Um, we offer chaperone flights. So the international portion of your flight would be chaperone. So for example, you would fly from Houston to New York and meet up with your cohort and then continue on to Europe with um, as a group with your chaperones. Our program leaders are typically U.S. high school teachers um, that are fluent in the language or the topic that you're learning. They are assigned a group of 12 students and they are there to help facilitate your learning and um, navigating the new environment. Um, and they will be your first go-to um, if you have any issues or concerns while you are there on your program. Our pre-departure orientation is amazing. You get to meet with the center staff of your program and they answer questions specific to um, your program. 24 seven support while you're abroad and travel insurance is included in your program um, tuition. So a little more about our um, high school summer, scholarships. Um, we give away six million every year just for high school students to study abroad over the summer. We're very proud of our scholarship fund. It goes towards our mission of accessibility and making sure our programs are accessible for students from all backgrounds and cultures. Um, the Merit and Financial Needs Scholarship can cover up to 100% of program tuition um, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors are eligible for this scholarship so that they can come back to their classroom community and share their experience and uh, create a global mindset there at their school. The Merit Scholarship is academic-based. It's 500 towards your tuition, and seniors are included in this scholarship. Um, so, um, we're excited to have these scholarships available. When you are applying for your scholarship, you will start an application. And whenever you start your application, it'll ask you what kind of scholarship you're applying for. You can say none, you can say academic merit, or you can say financial need. And the scholarship applications include three short essay questions. They're personal narrative in nature. So they're about yourself, what you like to do after school, what are you uh, motivated by? You need your, oh, about the essay questions. I recommend, highly recommend you start in a Google Doc and you write out your answers and you share them with um, a trusted friend, a trusted teacher, a, a parent or a legal guardian to make sure you're answering all parts of the question and it's thoughtful and sincere. Um, the essay questions are scaled. We do look at them. So please make sure you're putting your best foot forward. You need your transcript for the current year, a teacher recommendation, which is fairly easy. You just put your teacher's email into the to ask on the portal, on your student portal, and it sends them a link for them to fill it out electronically. <clears throat> Please keep in mind, teachers are very busy people, so give them um, a week or two to fill out the recommendation and make sure they're aware that you're sending the recommendation, okay? 
<laughs> the terms and conditions will need to be signed by your parent or legal guardian. That way, we know that they know you're trying to leave the country for the summer. That's always a good idea for us to make sure everyone's on board. And financial supporting documents if um, you are applying for the financial uh, base scholarship. So some important deadlines that we have. The December 1st deadline is the early bird deadline for um, entering the raffle to win a free flight. Um, the scholarship deadline is January 24th. So you have some time, but remember, you need to make sure your essays are written very thoughtfully and give time for your transcript to be um, sent to you and for your teachers to fill out your recommendations. So don't wait for the last minute to get this done. Um, thank you for attending our virtual fair. Um, there are more sessions and you can see the full schedule using this QR code. Pierre, did I was going to say it's a, a yeah. great opportunity to get to hear alumni talk about um, their experience on programs. So uh, check out the schedule. Uh, if you have a specific destination in mind, we're going to be running sessions on uh, programs in uh, places like um, China, uh, Japan, um, Spain. I mean, all the Spanish programs because you can learn Spanish, uh, like Lisa said, in uh, multiple locations with CIE. Uh, we'll have uh, sessions dedicated to the homestay experience, if you want to learn more about that, uh, some about our honors language programs, fundraising best practices, um, and then some more like thematic um, sessions about our global entrepreneurship programs, for example, that we do in a few locations. Our arts program, uh, in all of those sessions, you'll get to hear from alumni their first-hand experience. So if you're considering traveling, I really encourage you to check out the, the schedule and sign up for a session because it's a great way to connect with someone like you who's done the program. Uh, so if you um, can bear uh, with us a few more minutes, we can uh, continue taking your questions in the Q&A. Um, I think there were a few questions, I think on transcript, Lisa. I don't know if you have more information to share on that. Someone was asking, does the transcript needs to be from this semester? And what's the baseline requirement to be accepted in terms of the transcript? Yeah, so the transcript, as long as you are requesting it um, this school year, whatever is on your transcript um, when you apply is what we will look at. We know the scholarship deadline is January 24th, so... Yes, and term it will be just kind of that fall semester um, information. Um, the baseline requirement. So we look at students um, with a holistic view. So we look at definitely your essay questions and your te teacher recommendation um, heavily. So make sure that you are being very thoughtful and uh, with putting your best foot forward with your essay questions and also picking a teacher that knows you well um, so that they can fill out that form. Um, you know, they know your study habits, they know the type of student you are. Um, so let me know if that answers your questions about baseline requirements. For ninth graders, yes. So if you're planning on submitting your application over Thanksgiving break, I would go ahead and request a copy of your transcript or a copy of whatever the school has um, available to give you so that you can submit that. Uh, follow up question on that for students who are homeschooled. Um, so for homeschool students, I would send an email to the HS Abroad email and the 
um, enrollment coordinator for your territory can help you through that process. Great. Yeah, because we do have homeschool students that participate. I'm just not familiar with how they show um, mm -hmm. their transcript. Yeah. It sounds like a great idea, actually, for someone who's homeschool because you'll get to really uh, meet with a, a ton of new uh, students. Um, so you, you get um, more social interaction. So that's a, that's a great idea and something we would certainly encourage. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about like the scholarships? I think there were, I answered a few uh, typing and then there's someone asking like, how can you receive, um, how much can you receive in scholarship? What to expect? So can you talk a, maybe a little bit more about the, um, um, the process and, and kind of like criteria as like around merit and need? Yeah, definitely. So the merit and need scholarship, um, <laughs> We look at uh, the total, um, so you're you're going to submit a tax document from your legal um, guardians. And we look at that document to analyze how much need um, that each family gets. So we kind of look at size of, in, how, size of household and yearly income for each family to determine the need um, for the scholarship. Uh, so as far as what you can expect to receive, it depends on each individual's family situation. And the deadline is January 24th, and you should know if you're accepted and how much you receive by the end of February. At that point, you can review your scholarship um, award and determine if you're able to study this summer or maybe you want to apply next year but a lot of students fundraise for their flights and remaining costs uh, my enrollment coordinator in the texas south area she fundraised for her entire high school study abroad experience on her own um, so we have very um, experienced and qualified enrollment coordinators to help you with some ideas always reach out and ask for our fundraiser kit. That's a really great um, resource to help you fundraise. There's a question about the process, <clears throat> if it's rolling. So the, the merit only scholarships, I think are processed on a rolling basis, but the merit and need scholarship are all mm -hmm. processed at the same time after the January 24th deadline. So if you're applying for a more significant merit and need scholarship, you will hear back usually typically three weeks after the scholarship deadline so sometimes in february um and yes. we don't really communicate mm -hmm. on the um, like the percentage of acceptance because it really changes every year based on who applies uh and the, the scholarship awards and amounts you get are really like lisa said dependent on your uh, family's uh, level of need uh so it's a uh, really looking at, you know, academic merit and, uh, and uh, the family situation in terms of, of need. But what I can say is that half um, of our participants benefit from some level of financial aid um, and that we have the most extensive scholarship program uh, in the US. So um, if that's something that, you know, you're interested in, it doesn't really hurt to apply. I really encourage you to apply because you would be, uh, you may be surprised at uh, what you get. Uh, so I would really encourage you to do that. <clears throat> so I have some, so GPA requirements. Um, I don't believe there is a set GPA requirement, but I will say the scholarships are, competitive and like I mentioned we look at the whole student um, um a former counselor yes if they know you well and they know um your study habits um so our students chaperoned at all times so during the let me start, there is a um, curfew for each location where they need to be back with their host family or at their uh, group accommodations. 
And the only time students are not chaperoned is when they're commuting from their group accommodation or homestay to the study center and whenever they are commuting back to their homestay or um, um, group accommodation. So the cultural activities, all the excursions, they will have chaperones with them. And there's a follow-up questions actually on that. I mean, similar uh, to be questions from someone's parents. Are we able to travel with an adult, with an adult from CIEE? Uh, and other students, so yes, through the chaperone flight. So maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then who can parents contact when their uh, kids are at the destination? So how does communication work on program? I think those are two really good questions. Yeah, great question. So you are able to book a chaperoned um, flight option when you go to uh, book your flights. So basically what will happen is you will fly the student will fly independently from their home city. So for example, I'm in Houston. So if I was a student, I would fly from Houston to let's say JFK in New York City. And then at JFK, I would meet up with my cohort, meet up with my chaperone to do the international portion of my flight with the group. Um, during travel times, we have, um, detailed information that goes out with the chaperone's name and numbers, um, instructions on, you know, what that day is going to look like so that students can feel prepared for that day of travel. And then the other question was how can, oh, for parents, <laughs> you will be able to contact your students, um, on whatever device that your student brings. As far as reaching out to adults, you will reach out to the US staff and the US staff will communicate from there. If there is a medical or behavior issue, the local center staff will contact you directly to discuss that matter. Um, and then we always encourage students, um, if they have an issue or a question to reach out to their program leader as soon as possible. It is much easier for program leaders to get um, solutions um, in, in issues resolved quickly because they're there in country at the time. So as far as adults reaching out to an adult at the staff center, it, it is going to have to go through the U.S. staff first. So you'd reach out to U.S. staff. Do you have free time that the students are allowed to go out alone? Um, during their lunch break, they can go with their new group of friends down the street into a, like a local cafe. Uh, when they're done for the day, they can go grab some gelato before they head home to their group accommodation or their host family. And now just one more thing on that because someone else asked uh -huh. and I tap an answer. For free time, um, after class also students like between when class is over or the activity is over and then coming home, they can uh, have free time every day. We do um, brief all the students during orientation on, you know, uh, safe behavior, um, you know, what are the neighborhoods you should avoid, areas of time where you should, uh, you know, target to stay safe. And also ask that students are always um, at least in a pair of two. Uh, during their free time, if they want to be uh, kind of like walking around town to make sure that they have a buddy uh, with them. And also all students are equipped with a SIM card to be able to be reachable um, and can text their program leaders. Uh, so we, there is some free time, but it's somewhat, you know, um, uh, controlled so that we, uh, we make sure that students stay safe. There's a, one question at the beginning, sorry, uh, Lisa from Tiana asking, uh, I recently got accepted to go to Korea and I also applied for the scholarship. I was wondering how long until I know if I got the scholarship or not. I'm assuming that means that it's someone who applied for a merit scholarship. So it would be if she applied for a merit scholarship, you know, you would hear back within a week or two, I think. If you applied yes, for a merit um, and need scholarship, that would be, you know, in February. Yeah, so merit and merit um, just merit is going to be one to two weeks, maybe three weeks, because we are 
experiencing higher volumes of applications. Um, like Pierre said, financial need scholarship will be announced at the end of February. Um, if you've mostly done school online, I would recommend sending it to an adult that has worked with you in some kind of educational capacity uh, to fill out the recommendation form. Good couple of questions on host families. Uh, is it single placement or can you have multiple students per homestay? And also during the weekends, can students visit family if they're in the city uh, just to visit? Two good questions. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, great question. So host family placements, it's usually you and another CIE participant. Single placements are rare. Um, so it's usually two to three CIE participants in a homestay. What was and the other one? Usually for oh. the visiting family during program, we mm -hmm. don't encourage you to do that. Like we ask that students wait until the end of the program because really we're trying to keep students focused on the, the group experience, the learning experience, and it's kind of distracting to, um, to to meet with family in the middle you can create uh homesickness too um so we don't really encourage it to be uh, to be clear it's wonderful if you have family living nearby but we would encourage you to either um arrive early or stay a little bit later uh, after the program is done uh, if you want to hang out with family in town yeah, and your weekends are going to be pretty busy as well. You'll have the day trip one weekend and an overnight trip another weekend. And for language um, participants, you're going to have a weekend where you are doing host family um, activities. Um, the up, host. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> There's, um, will host families transport or is it public transportation? It is um, normally public transportation. Students use the public transportation to get to their study centers, which is very different than over here in America. Um, their public transportation is commonly and widely used among its citizens. Um, there are some times when maybe the host families will say, okay, can you pick the students up this evening and I'll do it the other evening, things like that, depending on parent availability, the host family's availability and what they work out. Um, There's a couple of questions in the chat about uh, the scholarship application process. I will say that if you have time, we're gonna be running two sessions really dedicated to that where someone from our team will actually walk you through the key steps of the process. You'll get to hear from an alumni um, what uh, he or she um, did to apply and like give you some, some application tips. So I encourage you to attend that session. We have one session uh, tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, so 7 p.m. Uh, West Coast time. And we have another session tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern so 4 p.m. West Coast time. If you can um, make it to one of those sessions, I highly encourage you to check it out because you'll get to hear firsthand from a student what it's like to apply and you'll have like a full walkthrough from one of our staff. Um, so one, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I wanted to answer about the high school senior programs for merit-based. Uh, for high school seniors, I really encourage looking at the first year abroad opportunity that we are um, <clears throat> currently um, uh, rolling out. It is a great opportunity to study abroad and use um, financial aid funds for through FAFSA. So seniors, if you're looking for programs that um, give out merit and financial need, I would look at the first year abroad. Um, about students, about scholarships covering flights, 
the scholarship covers program tuition, but you can use outside scholarships to pay for any remaining cost or for your flight. Um, there, I mean, you can go to your counselor, your academic counselor, and ask if there's any resources within your community. Um, a lot of alumni at high schools and community members like to donate to students doing great things. So I would definitely start with your academic advisor at your school about other scholarships available in your community. Um, students who require medication, once you are accepted, you will fill out a, a comprehensive health form and list all of your medications and we will um, keep track of it um, internally with documentation, but um, you will be able to uh, administer the medication on your own. It's a good question about teachers. Can you talk a little bit about who we uh, work with for teachers? Yeah, so your language instructors, they are um, local in language instructors. They're in country. Um, the <clears throat> topic program teachers are, are instructors or professionals that are successful in that career space. And so they're very knowledgeable. We have trainings and they follow our wonderful curriculum um, that is geared towards language development and proficiency and acquiring um, new topics. Um, so yeah, our our local our our um, local instructors are wonderful, wonderful people. If there's something more specific about the teachers, can you put that in the chat? Um, There's a couple of questions about what's covered on the trip. So I'll just quickly say that all mm -hmm. um, costs are covered on the by the program fee. And by that, I mean all the, the expenses on site related to activities, ground transportation, food, accommodations. Uh, so really, you should worry about paying for the flight because that's always the responsibility of the students. Even if you get a full scholarship, you'll have to pay for your flight you'll have to fundraise for the flight. And then anything beyond that uh, would be really just uh, pocket money uh, that you would use for souvenirs or buying yourself like a little snack on the go. Uh, but if you didn't want to spend one dime on your trip, uh, everything would be, all the activities and the, all the meals would be covered. The lunch meal depends on some locations. In some places, Host families pack a uh, lunch for their students. Uh, and in some other places, students go out and have grab lunch outside at like local sandwich places. When they do, they are provided a stipend to be able to do that. So they either have uh, like little food vouchers or cash that the study center gives them out. Uh, so you shouldn't really worry about that and the uh, transportation money. And the question about how much money you should plan on bringing is really personal. It really depends on your spending habits. Um, it, again, it will cover whatever you want to bring back and whatever you want to uh, offer yourself like on site, you know, like being able to like buy ice cream when you want or being able to, you know, pay for, uh, to go, um, I don't know, um, to see your, a movie with you know a friend on the weekend or something like that but otherwise everything else is is covered and for the question on see debit mm -hmm. card or cash we would really advise uh to bring uh cards usually i cannot remember the last time i used cash in a foreign country and i do quite a bit of traveling so i think having a card that works abroad is usually the best way to go it's also safer because you don't carry cash around uh, so you're less likely to lose or, you know, uh, be exposed to um, to um, theft. For booking the flight, um, when you're ready to do that, there will be a task in your student portal and a link to FlightFox. <clears throat> FlightFox is a third-party organization that we work with. They basically help us um, get all the chaperone flights put together and to make sure 
everyone is um, arriving in the country during the arrival window time. So Flight Fox is really great during emergencies, canceled flights, et cetera. So they will help you organize um, all parts of that for your trip. And it's very easy for us to track your student's flight path if, if there's um, a delay or cancellation. And so, yeah, Flight Fox will help you book your flights. Classes are held in a CIE study center. Um, interaction with other students. I think other some... foreign student, other foreign student. Yeah, with... I think in most programs we try to um, plan little interactions with local students or local teens. Um, but all the classes otherwise are taught by local teachers in a, either a language school or at CIEE. Uh, I mean, it's all CIE higher teachers. We, you know, we control the, the curriculum and the delivery of the curriculum. So in some study centers that don't have enough class space, we would rent class space outside. Sometimes it's on like on a university campus or, you know, site next to the study center, but it's all like CIE rented classrooms and CIE teachers. Lightbox. Yes, light boxes are is required. Any scheduling conflicts, you need to work with your enrollment coordinator directly. Yes, once your student is accepted, when it gets closer to summer, you will have a um, online pre-departure orientation where you can learn more about the specific program with the center staff, the local center staff. Um, parents are invited to that as well. Um, so that's in response to the question, do you provide information sessions like this after students find out they're accepted? Yes, lots of information is going to be coming your way when your student is accepted. Um, so just keep a lookout and keep looking at your student portal. Should you arrive the day before when you're working with Flight Fox, they'll make sure that you are getting there um, within the appropriate time. So there's usually a day and a window of time that you should be arriving because the center staff pick you up from the airport and take you to the study center. So that's always a fun time to meet the center staff. Chaperones when we get to our airports. So um, you will do the um, domestic portion of your flight um on your own some parents will book a one book a flight with their student to get them to the chaperoned gateway airport and then the parent will fly home um so there won't there are there aren't chaperones from each from everyone's um home airport that would be a huge thing to put together logistically <clears throat> Uh, with Lightbox, you can communicate with them um, the type of seat you'd like. Um, you work with them to go over any details that you'd like specifically on your trip. You will be able to meet other students before the trip. Um, it kind of happens naturally when you're doing your Canvas course. And when you do the online pre-departure orientation, a lot of students immediately started making WhatsApp groups or adding each other on Instagram and forming groups. So, and especially if you do the chaperone trip, you will be able to meet your cohort of students at the Gateway Airport. Yes, um, you will be able to contact your chaperone during that travel day. You will be given a detailed email and itinerary on all the information you'll need. Your chaperone will put you in a WhatsApp group um, 
a couple of days before your travel day. And so you'll be able to already kind of meet your chaperone. So, um, yes, you will be able to contact your chaperone. Oh, let's see. <clears throat> You live from a New York City area airport. If going to Spain, it's hard to confirm now because usually we try to pick yeah. hub airports based on where the students are so that the hub airport meets most students' needs. But every year we have lots of flights leaving from JFK. Uh, and Spain is one of our number one destinations. I think it's safe to say yes, even though I can't 100% say yes because, it's again, it will depend on where students are. Um, there was a question, do you travel alone to host family? Um, once you are picked up from the airport, when you arrive, you'll go to orientation at the study center and you will meet your host family then. So you'll have the study center um, staff there with you meeting the host family um, to kind of help break the ice and send you on your way. What about gateway airports to France? Same thing like that will be confirmed like later in the cycle once we have a full cohort of students traveling and that we can make choices on what are the best hub airports to serve most students. But France again is one of our biggest destination as well. So um, usually uh, there are flights leaving from uh, Chicago and then both coasts, typically LA, uh, JFK, uh, so that, again, will change every year, but you can expect major airport for France. And there's a good question about shirts. Will there be matching shirts so everyone can find everyone? Yes. Uh, when you're confirmed to go on program, you will receive a uh, CIE t-shirt that you'll be asked to wear on travel day. And the number one reason for that is so that you can uh, be easily uh, seen at the airport so that the program leader meeting you can spot you and also so that you can see other CIE students. So on travel days, as we get uh, more and more uh, students on program, it's really uh, fun to see the, all the CIE shirts uh, walking around the airport. You'll, you'll see a lot of those on travel day. Um, can your parents stay with you at the airport? Um, I'm going to say no, because they can't get back to the gates without going through security and they need tickets to get through security. And what if you can't make it to a certain airport? Um, so FlyFox is going to make sure if you want to shop your own flight, they're going to get you to the correct airport. Um, if you want somewhere closer to home, you can you want to do an independent flight. Um, but again, Flight Fox will make sure that you feel comfortable and confident with your flight choice. Okay, if you're planning to attend program with a friend, can you plan to be in the same group for travel? Um, we will not coordinate that. Flight Fox is um, very busy coordinating all of the flights. You're more than welcome to give it a try in the Flight Fox chat and say, I am traveling with this person. Can you maybe put us on the same flight? Um, but it's not guaranteed. Um, usually host families do have at least two participants in their home. <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice is going. <laughs> um, it is rare to have a single placement host family. Also, are there dorms? Um, the topic programs have dorms or hotel uh, group accommodations. Some topic programs do have host family stays. It just you can it see really, on the yeah. It depends on homes on language programs. You should always expect a homestay. If you have a question about that, you can see on our uh, website, on the program search, you're able to filter by uh, housing option. So you can see what program have homestays or which one have dorms. 
do you have to use a chaperone flight while flying with flight fox no you can also choose to fly solo with flight fox um or be part of the the group flight it's really up to to you there's not necessarily a cost advantage of taking the group flight it's not like we have like specially negotiated rates for a charter flight um, but it's really more the the guarantee to be like uh, accompanied by a, a CIA staff on the international leg of your flight. Um, and it's also kind of quite frankly, a great way to meet other students and break the ice before you arrive in country. So a lot of the, the, the students really bond well during that trip. Like every time I chaperone a flight or that I meet students at the airport, it's really amazing how quickly uh, students um, get to know each other going through that little travel day adventure. So it's, uh, I think it's a great way to meet other uh, students. The applications are competitive. Um, do you know any percentage on that? Uh, no, but it's competitive because, I mean, we ha always have more applications than we have seats, obviously, for uh, scholarships. Uh, so, you know, it's really important that you put your best foot forward. It's uh, the application in itself is really a, a good experience, too. It's a great um, almost like practice round for your college applications, honestly, because the scholarship essay questions are very close to what colleges are going to ask you uh, to write about. Uh, you know, it's about... Um, uh, your personality, your motivations, examples of, you know, how you overcome a challenge. So uh, I think use that opportunity to apply it as like a learning experience in and of itself. Uh, it's really uh, a good process and, uh, and uh, yeah, the competitive. So put your best foot forward, but you won't really know until you apply. So we encourage you to apply. And so the number of students on program really depends on program, like on some smaller programs to more uh, niche location. Like I'm thinking places like Morocco, for example, like th there's less demand for places like that. We may have groups that are like, you know, maybe 20 to 30 students overall for the program. But then on bigger programs like Barcelona, Spain or Paris, France or Rome, Italy, group sizes can reach, you know, anywhere from between 50 and 75 students on program. Uh, however, I will say that we always make sure that we, um, we keep a small group feel on the program. So even though your cohort may be you know, 75 students big, uh, you'll be put into class that are capped at 16 students per class, I believe, uh, to keep the learning uh, really interactive and fun and also activities kind of interactive and engaging. Uh, so you should expect lots of opportunities to make friends, but also focus time with a smaller group to be able to learn. That's kind of the, the idea. Um, I think most students um, attend solo. I would say, well, of course, we don't have any statistics on this as far as um, if they plan with their friends or go solo. Most of the students I interactive plan this to on their own. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet new uh, new friends, and everyone you'll meet on that program will be you know solo also. So it's really fun to just kind of meet uh, out there. I, I will say that one of the great side benefit of the the scholarship is also that we have really some of the most diverse cohorts of students traveling. So you may have um, students from a super different background. Uh, attending your program and a lot of the students uh, tell us that uh, that was one of the big advantage of the program was to be able to meet new friends and from backgrounds and uh, you know states and cultures that they never really had a chance to interact with before so it's a, it's a big uh, big benefit of the program as well the scholarship is based on um, the it's not based on income the merit only scholarship is based on academic so we look at the uh students academic record um the merit yeah. and need scholarship is based on family income and um the overall application can my son bring his skateboard i'm tempted to say no for two reasons one 
it, there's not a ton of free time. Like those programs are very scheduled. So I think he may just get, it's going to be clunky to bring there. It's going to take luggage room. It's less room for him to bring back uh, souvenirs and stuff. And he won't really have a lot of time to practice. Two, he may be a little bit of, of a safety hazard, I guess. I mean, even if he's super skilled, do you really want your son to have a broken arm in, you know, far away from home? I don't know if that would be the best idea. Uh, so I would probably advise you not to. But you can pack your own bag so you can make your own decisions. Um, Questions on, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. <clears throat> During, once you're accepted, um, there will be readings about technology and what um, is required or uh, recommended that you bring. Um, I would say an iPad is easy to travel with. Um, so that's a personal choice, um, but there will be like um, information on what technology uh, you should bring. Yeah, most programs do require some kind of device to be able to do assignments. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you're welcome to bring your own computer for sure. And for those who don't have access to a computer, like we make sure that you have the right device to be able to uh, fully participate in the program. So there will be, that's kind of like a, a logistical question that comes later in the cycle once you're confirmed to go on program. But yes, you can expect to have some iPad or computer. <clears throat> Sounds like we answered everything, Lisa, and you're still alive. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, thank you for doing this, uh, even though you're struggling with your uh, cough. And I uh, want to thank everyone for attending. I really encourage you to sign up for more sessions. Uh, this session was really dedicated on overview of the programs and the opportunities for uh, you to study abroad. but Again, we have lots of great opportunities to uh, hear directly from alumni, and they're just super excited to share. Uh, so don't hesitate to, to sign up. It's uh, free and available. You guys are all so welcome. I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and share with you. Yeah, thanks um, for the great questions, everyone. And good luck yes, on the application. I will, get, I will get some tea tonight. I have lots of presentations this week for International Education Week. So... Yep. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.